I've not seen such bravery. This video is brought to you in part by Loot Crate. Get geek and gamer gear delivered to your door every month for 10% off. Just click the link in the description and use code BRUTAL10. Oh, sorry, did I scare you? I've just been brushing up on my Psycho Killer face in honor of today's game, Psycho Killer. It's a game that was originally for the CDTV, and I don't really know how else to introduce it other than to say that sometimes it makes me wanna... Psycho Killer is a game from 1992 developed by Delta 4 Interactive, the same people who did The Town With No Name. Yeah, you remember that game, right? The weirdly animated, weirdly voice acted, weirdly weird western game? Though definitely not what I would call a good game, Town With No Name had strange charm and really hooked me with its ridiculousness, making me want to play more of the game to make sure I saw all of the weird. Now, if weird is the word I'd use to mainly describe Town With No Name, then I'd have to say that Psycho Killer earns the word boring. I'm playing the DOS version of the game, which is a point-and-click adventure. Much like Critical Path, Psycho Killer resembles a choose-your-own-adventure game where one path takes you along the story, and any other branching paths end in, haha, you're dead, there's no save, so start from the beginning. Unlike Critical Path, however, the FMV in Psycho Killer is terrible. It comes in bursts, a second or two of action followed by a still frame. I thought this was just a tactic being used for the opening credits, but it turns out it's just how the whole game is. The opening tells a story of a woman with a surprisingly well fleshed out backstory. She lives in house, owns car, knows how to get into car, start car, and even drive car. She also excels at leaving her vehicle to follow strangers armed with knives and parking her car in the middle of the road. And now our story starts. October was cold. The sun brought light but no warmth, and an east wind chilled the countryside. Well, at least the writing and voice acting are on equal levels of boring. But don't fall asleep, because at any moment we could be required to click something. For instance, if we don't click on the brakes during this cutscene, we just drive full speed into the car that's so lovingly parked in the middle of the road. Jeez, I was expecting a fender bender, but I guess we were driving a car made out of dynamite. No, my name is Carved in Stone. The ground is my eternal home. Freaking dark, dude! Like I said before, there's no saving, so every time you make the wrong choice, you're treated with some sexy saxophone, <laughs> then dumped back to the menu screen. If we actually manage to hit the brakes, though, we climb out of our car and see the woman from before. Oh, shit. Sugar, what is this? I guess there's a reason why there's not a bunch of chase sequences filmed in large open fields. It kind of just looks like they're frolicking. She's obviously in trouble. How can I help her? And so we quickly run after them, using all of our energy to save that woman. I walked for some time coming eventually to a small stream. Oh, never mind, we go on a nice walk and look at streams, apparently. But little do we know that we're about to have our first real encounter with the Psycho Killer. Sugar, it's him. Eat my Reeboks, freak face. Is this a real game that people purchased with real money? Like if it's a stupid thing you made with your friends, or maybe a school project for PowerPoint class, I'd understand. But how can you in good conscience charge people money for- Eat my Reeboks, freak face. <coughs> and things don't improve from here. We pick up the machete and then begin doing... What exactly? What are we doing? The killer, if you can even call him a killer, I don't know that he's killed anyone yet, is alone. I'm guessing the woman got away, so I don't exactly know what we're doing right now. We're just slowly wandering around a forest. There's no clues or directions or anything like that. It's just a guessing game. If someone walked in on you playing this game, they might just think you're looking at pictures of trees for some reason. But then, out of nowhere, we come across the killer again. He had something in his hand. It was a petrol bomb. Alright, let's put this blade to good use. Chop his hand off. I made him drop the bomb, but the machete slipped from my hand. The flames were too fierce to retrieve it, so I ran. 
I know there's a joke in here somewhere, but it's seriously so bad that I don't know what to say. So instead of that, let's look at some more trees. Seriously, this game is like 99% looking at pictures of trees, and at no point are you like, oh, this place again? I know where I'm at, I can now make a strategy. It's more like sitting through someone's vacation photos, but instead of going somewhere interesting, they just wandered through the woods. Eventually, there's a break from the trees as we find our way to a train stop. There's a phone, which seems like a great opportunity to develop the plot a little, but if we go for it... Hang up. Forever. No, my name is Carved in Stone. Yeah. So instead of interacting with the one thing so far that looks like I can interact with, the solution to our problem is to run down onto the station platform, see that the killer is following us, and then head back into the freaking trees. <sighs> Well, in an attempt to branch out a bit, the developers go out on a limb and provide some gripping information about the killer. I found a path and sprinted onwards. I wondered what the maniac was doing at this moment. Morgan? Yes? Are you too weak to kill? No. <laughs> All right, there you have it, the one scene that manages to be so bad that it's entertaining. I especially like how the killer's laugh sounds like a herd of dying cows. <laughs> From there, it's tree time again. Here's a tree, there's a tree. Man, if you like pixelated photos of trees, do I have a game for you. We also pick up a stick because maybe we're trying to become a tree now, I don't know. And then head down onto a dock. The killer left his victim and turned his attention to me. Well, there she is. Where has she been this whole time? The killer was clearly alone chasing me multiple times. Was she just hanging out, waiting for him to get back? I don't even know why I'm asking questions when I know there's no answers. I'm really barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> So we expertly disarm the killer, and it's time for the epic showdown. Okay, maybe epic isn't the right word. Success. I was the hero, not the victim. Though they never did find his body. Local man saves girl, kills killer, even though we can't find his body, but it says he drowned, but no body? God, they can't even make an ending that makes sense and there was barely even a story. But that was Psycho Killer, and trust me, you don't want to play it. Town with no name? Weird enough to be fun. Psycho Killer? Boring. Not to mention that there was a lot of time where I was just having to wait for the game to load or something. Between every clip, every screen, every picture of a freaking tree! You just have to wait a ridiculous amount of time. I made him drop the bomb, but the machete slipped from my hand. The flames were too fierce to retrieve it, so I ran. My final playthrough took me 9 minutes and 9 seconds, and 5 minutes and 23 seconds of that time was spent waiting for the game to do something. I actually edited the footage down to find out how long I spent waiting, that's how painful it was. As far as I can tell, the only worthwhile thing in Psycho Killer is... <laughs> So that was Psycho Killer. Kind of disappointing, right? I was honestly hoping for some better FMV from these guys, but all we really got were a bunch of pictures of trees. Now I'm no professional game developer or anything, but here's a tip. If you're gonna make a game called Psycho Killer, maybe include less pictures of trees and include more. Oh, what's that sound? Could that be the sound of advertising? It's Loot Crate, the guys that send you geek, gamer, and pop culture gear. Six to eight items for less than $20 every month. There's also Loot Crate DX and Loot Wear at different, different prices. Sign up here or click the link in the description and enter code BRUTAL10, Brutal 10 to save 10% on any new subscription, and you could be walking away with loot so cool that you'll be saying zippity doodah, dippity dope. Each month has a theme. 
August's theme was anti-hero, anti as you can see by all this anti-hero loot. September's theme is speed. Sign up by the 19th to get in on that one. October's theme is none, none of, of your, your business. business, and also they didn't tell me, but I bet it's gonna be rad, so sign up, up using code BRUTAL10. By using that code, you support my channel, so thanks for that. And thanks to Loot Crate for supporting myself and other YouTubers like me. Now go on, grab some crates, and I'll see you next time.